In this video, I wanna talk about the eight biggest mistakes home buyers make. Number one, looking for more home than you can afford. In a seller's market, if you see a home listed at 500,000, for example, and you know that homes have been going five, 10, 15% over asking price, but 500,000 is your absolute cap of, as far as where you're approved or where you can afford or where you wanna be, then you probably should be looking a little bit below 500,000, 450 or 475 or whatever it may be. So that if you do find that home that you absolutely love, you're not heartbroken when it goes five, 10, 15% above what you can afford. So again, if your budget is 500,000 in this scenario, but you start looking at homes that are 700,000, well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see homes that are a little bit nicer, a little bit more sparkly, and you're gonna fall in love with those homes. Then you're gonna go back to a house that's you know $200,000 less than where you were looking, and they're not gonna compare, and it's gonna leave you dissatisfied. And so I recommend starting your search, looking for homes that are practical and affordable. The second I see is emptying your savings and underestimating the cost of home ownership. There is quite a bit of expenses that once you own that home that you may not have factored in. For example, furnishing the house, very expensive. The routine maintenance of keeping things updated, of things that you have to fix. When you're renting a home and something breaks, well, you call the person that owns it and they come and fix it. When you own the home, there's no one else to call. Who are you gonna call? someone else. You're the one that's gonna have to fix it. And those expenses can add up. On average in this area, we see about $5,000 in repairs and unforeseen costs per year. I am never gonna financially recover from this. That we always recommend that homeowners keep that amount of money or more you know, on hand just in case something were to happen. The third I see is fixating on the house over the neighborhood. Um, houses can change in the sense that don't be distracted by a shiny object. You go into a home that's been renovated and you're like, oh, I love this kitchen or I love this bathroom. All good things and things that you should like, but don't let that distract you from where the house is located because you can't change location. So if you go into a neighborhood and you have some red flags, let those red flags speak to you. Really do your due diligence on each neighborhood, on the surrounding uh, neighbors. There are uh, crime reports that are publicly available. There's Megan's Law that's publicly available where you can see sex offenders in the area. Just really do your due diligence on exactly who's around you, what you should expect from that neighborhood, what's close to that neighborhood as far as amenities and things of that nature. Um, and let that really speak loudly and then let the things like a kitchen and, and bathroom and things that, that can be changed um, come secondary. Fourth mistake would be not working with a realtor, not being represented in a transaction. I have lots of videos out there as far as why you should work with a realtor and what value a buyer's agent brings. So I won't go too deep into this now. Please see my video, why you should work with a buyer's agent to learn more about that. But it is something obviously highly recommended. The next one is focusing solely on the purchase price. What I mean by that is if you go into a home, but you don't really like much about it, except for the price, you don't really like the location, don't really like the layout, or anything about the house except for the price. Keep in mind you're gonna be spending quite a bit of time in that house, so make sure that it's more than just the purchase price that you like about it. Next is waiting for that unicorn. The house that just checks every box. The house that is perfect price that nobody else is bidding on. The house that's got the yard that you want that's perfectly flat with the pool and swing set for the kids and just everything about it's perfect. Obviously don't be in a rush. Don't just buy a house to buy a house, but at the same time, be realistic with your expectations. Make sure that what you're looking for matches where the market is, matches where, uh, where you're looking, where, where your price range is, things of that nature. Quick TV timeout. I'd always love to be a resource for all things real estate. So please feel free to reach out to me anytime at 301-452-3245 or the rest of my information is below. Now back to the video. Next, be weary about taking on bigger projects than you'll actually want to tackle. Oftentimes I'll walk through a house with somebody and they'll be like, okay, I'm going to knock this wall down and redo this kitchen and put all new floors here. And I'm going to bump this level up. And I'm, in my head, I'm like, I bet you I'll come here in a year and none of this is done. So all I would say is some, some people will do it for sure. But I would say a lot of people think that they're going to do more than they actually will. So make sure the house kind of checks enough boxes as it currently is with its layout and condition and things of that nature. Or if it doesn't, just be realistic with what doing a big renovation actually means as far as stress, timing, budget. That's not to say don't do big renovations because you can oftentimes get a great house at a better price that becomes that house exactly how you want it to be by doing renovations. So they are very valuable and, and definitely are, are worth considering. Just make sure you know all the ins and outs of it before 
you agree to buy a house with the condition of doing these big renovations. And lastly is not putting enough emphasis on functionality. There are certain things you can't change about a house as far as location, we already know that. Also, the functionality of a house is sometimes not able to be changed. If you have a very small basement that the foundation wasn't completely excavated, a, you're not gonna be able to re-excavate the foundation of that basement more often than not. So that's not gonna change. If you have only one bathroom with three bedrooms up, one bathroom down, and you have three kids, and they, you want them all to be on the same level, well, functionality of that may not be perfect for what you need. If you have a lot, home with a lot of stairs, and you um, are getting in your later stages of life, that may not be exactly what you want five years from now or even at the time when you're buying it. So make sure whatever house that you buy has a functionality or at least can be modified very easily to have that functionality to make your everyday life and living a lot more enjoyable. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.